Mother's Weekends. Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to bring you my weekly wrap up for the week of May the 14th to the 20th. And if you hear the pitter patter of little feet running around, that would be because I am puppy sitting my dog. But apparently he's decided that I'm boring and he's going to go and sleep now. But if you hear him, that's why. This week I read a total of four books. I read a total of 1,346 pages. The four books brings my yearly... <sighs> Benny! <laughs> The four books brings my yearly reading total up to 93 books. And now he's got the squeaky toys. This is gonna be good. Okay, ignore the background noise, please. The first book that I read this week was Girl In Between by Anna Daniels. This is a debut novel by an Aussie author. And this was just a really, really fun read. So it takes place in Queensland. And just as I did with last week, I'm gonna read you guys the blurb so that you can get a sense of what it's about. Lucy Crichton has just moved in with some gregarious housemates called Brian and Denise. Who are her parents. She's also the proud mother of Glenda, her beloved 12 year old Kelpie, and she has absolutely no interest in the dashing son of her parents' new next door neighbour. Well, maybe just a little. As the girl in between relationships, careers and cities, Lucy is facing some awkward truths, like her mum's obsession with Sher, her father's unsolicited advice, and the probability that there's more cash on the floor of her parents' car than in her own bank account. Thank goodness for Lucy's crazy but wonderful best friend Rosie who's around to cushion reality with wild nights at the lo local whip crack hotel, escapades in Japanese mud baths and double dating under the Christmas lights in London. But will Lucy work out what she really wants to do in life and who she wants to share it with? The blurb is actually a pretty good summary of this story. So Lucy is a 30 something year old woman living in Queensland and she's in between jobs, in between relationships, and she's got no idea what she's doing with her life. Sometimes I can relate to that because it's not often that you find books about 30 something year old women who just are trying to enjoy themselves and don't really have a clear direction in which they're going. So it does use some very Aussie language and turns of phrases, which was really fun to read because that's always entertaining for me, but may confuse some other readers unless you're familiar with an Australian sense of humor. I would describe this as a journey book as Lucy tries to find her path and what she wants to do with her life. If you're looking for giant complications, you're not gonna get it in this. It is very much a general fiction life story and it was a really nice, light, fun read. I gave Girl in Between 3.5 out of five stars. Like I said, good fun read. I was sent this book for review as part of a blog tour by Ellen Nunwen. So thank you very much for, to them for sending it through to me. And also just quietly, look at this cover. You've got the beach lifestyle and up the top, you've got the London skyline to match Lucy's in between life. I just love that, that's a cute detail. Next up, I read The Brain Sparrow by Zana Freitlin. And this again is one of the shortlisted young adult books for the Children's Book Council Awards for 2017. This book was incredible. If you haven't read it, here's what it's about. Sometimes at night, the dirt outside turns into a beautiful ocean, as red as the sun and as deep as the sky. I lie on my bed, Queenie's feet pushing against my cheek and listen to the waves lapping at the tent. Subi is a refugee, born in an Australian immigration detention center after his mother fled the violence of a distant homeland. Life behind the fences is all he has ever known. But as he grows, his imagination gets bigger too, until it's bursting at the limits of his world. Then one night, Jimmy arrives, a scruffy, impatient girl who appears from the other side of the wires carrying a notebook written by a mother she lost. Subi and Jimmy might both find a way to freedom as their tales unfold, but not until each of them has been braver than ever before. Guys, this is a book that will pull on your heartstrings as someone who is not proud of Australia's handling of refugees at all, and I'm not gonna get into that because that's a completely different conversation. This book was just, it was so sad to read because children living in detention centers is something that should not be happening. And through this book, Zaina Fraylin has highlighted the conditions that they might be living in. They don't go to school because they, there are no teachers to take them, to teach them. They've closed down the school room. Through Subi's eyes, you see the impact of living in detention on the adults around him. So Subi lives with his family in the family section of the detention center. So he lives with his mother and his sister and they share a tent with a whole group of other families. And then there are multiple tents of families with children of all different ages. We see through his eyes, the way that he perceives the guards and how the guards perceive him. It's just incredibly powerful and 
moving and touching and sad. And his relationship with Jimmy, the little girl that he meets, is really interesting too because she also doesn't understand the detention centre. She doesn't understand its purpose or why people would put them in there. However, she finds a connection with Subi and, and they begin to unravel a mystery about her family and the connection of the Bone Sparrow. I just, I, I can't recommend this book enough. I'm not going to do it justice describing it because it's one of those books that you just feel when you're reading. So I highly, highly recommend you pick this up if you haven't. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. And finally this week I concluded the Magicians trilogy by Lev Grossman with The Magician King and The Magician's Land. What I forgot about these books was I love The Magician's World and I love Les Grossman's storytelling style, but it is so slow <laughs> and it took me ages to read these books or to plow through them. And I'm glad that I did because I love the stories and now I can finally keep watching season two of The Magicians, even though season one sort of spoiled me for The Magician King anyway. But now I can continue to go on and not worry about spoiling myself for the books. So goal achieved. Yay! I gave both of these books 3.5 out of 5 stars. I'll talk a little bit about both books and the aspects that I really liked about them, but I'm not going to go into spoilers because obviously second and third book in a series, if you haven't read them, if you haven't read the first one, I don't want to give you give away what happens next. In The Magician King we follow two perspectives, Quentin and Julia's stories and I will say that I prefer Julia's storyline to Quentin's but that's because Quentin is one of those narrators where you sort of love to hate him and I did felt that in the first Magician's book and I felt that in all of the, <laughs> the subsequent books. He's just a guy who's trying to find his place and he makes a lot of stupid decisions and he's not entirely sensitive all the time so <laughs> sometimes you get a little bit exasperated with him. Julia, on the other hand, you know that something's up with her. Something's gone completely wrong. I sort of knew because I'd seen season one of the series, but it was really interesting to see how it unfolded in the book. So her story was really, really quite interesting. As I said in Quentin's story, Quentin is off in pursuit of an adventure, but he doesn't really fully understand the implications of what pursuing an adventure is like. And, you know, he faces some hard truths in this book and the realities of what does happen when you go in search of, you know, an adventure that takes you out of your comfort zone. As with the first book and also the last book in the series, there are numerous cultural references in this book. Most notably the ones that had me cheering were Highlander, Harry Potter and Die Hard references. I just thought that was great. In The Magician's Land we have multiple perspectives. So we have Quentin's perspective as normal. We also have a new character Plum. We have Elliot's perspective and Janet's as well. With this book really felt like it was leading up to something big and it did because Fillory's story is coming to a head everything sort of starts to converge and happen all at once. Again it had a slower pace to reading it. There's a lot of detail in these books and I think that's what slows it down which is fine there's nothing wrong with it I'm not saying that makes it a bad book it just makes it slow for me to read which sometimes I get distracted really easily and if it takes me a long time to read something or I have to go back and reread passages I get easily distracted and I didn't want to be but I was. <laughs> but I still came out of it loving it so I don't know. The most notable thing in The Magician's Land, Quentin has really grown up. He is starting to take responsibility for his actions. He's starting to realise how his background has influenced the way that he is and that was really great to see and I probably preferred Quentin as a character more in this book than in the previous two. This book had a really satisfying conclusion. The only thing I would have wished for was a little bit more information on Plum or on Asmodeus and hopefully Lev Grossman may one day put out there Asmodeus' story or a book about Plum because she was really, really interesting. So those are the four books that I read this week. Pretty happy with myself, must say. If I can recommend that you pick up any book from this pile, please, please, please read The Bone Sparrow. It is just truly, truly beautiful and lovely and oh, sad and heartbreaking and just wonderful. So please read it. Really quickly, I'm going to show you what I'm planning on reading in the upcoming week. I would really like to get to Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, Lies by T.M. Logan, which is a review copy, and The Dark Lake by Sarah Bailey, which is also a review copy of a book. So I would like to get through those this week and have some thoughts and feelings on them for you next week. What have you been reading this week? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you're not already following me on Instagram, I post a lot on there, lots of books, photos, just started a new theme. I'm really excited about it and I would love to see you. Or let me know your Instagram link down below because I would love to follow you too. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.